Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to create a unique list of items when we're pulling from a large table based on a specific criteria. It's an array formula. I stumbled across this formula while helping someone out today and I thought it was worthwhile showing you how to do this. So let's take a look and see how we can do this in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have this list here of names, four different names and their scores. And up here I have a drop-down list showing the different names Tom, Ed, Jack, and Frank. And depending which name I pull here, it'll populate this small table here with the unique instances based on that name and the associated score. So if I select Ed, you can see I have three instances that pop up. Jack, five, and Frank, I have six. So the formula that's in column H is this one here, and the formula in column I is the one below. The only difference is over here you can see it's pulling from either column 1 or column 2 of this range. And it's wrapped in an if error so that if there is no instances beyond the 2, for example, here with Tom, I get a blank rather than an error. So I'm going to go ahead and select Jack. And we're going to choose this cell right here, and we're going to walk through the formula to see how it works. So if we look at the index formula, the index formula, you have an array, which the array is from E1 to F17. And the row number is determined by the small if and the two row functions. And then the column number is either 1 or 2, as I indicated before whether I'm pulling the name from column E or the score from column F. If we look at the small function, the array is determined by the if and row number, and then the k number is based on the other row number function. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to hit escape, and we're going to take this formula that's in H7 and we're going to walk through it. Now again, notice that there are curly brackets around the formula so that indicates that it's an array formula because we're going to compare two separate arrays and because of that we need to make this an array formula. So I'm going to go up to the formula tab and I'm going to select evaluate formula and we're going to look at the formula that's in cell H7. So the first thing that Excel wants to do is identify what's in I1. In this case it's Jack, so if I hit evaluate notice that becomes Jack. And now it wants to take a look at the first part of the if formula. If this list from E2 down to E17 equals Jack. So if I hit evaluate you're going to see a bunch of trues and falses. Every place that they're that Jack occurs in column E, it will be true. So you can see we have false, false, true, false, 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 true, etc. So that indicates all the locations that Jack appears in column E. Next, we're going to look at the row number E2 to E17, and all that's going to do is give us 2 through 17. And now Excel is going to run that if statement and compare the false and trues to 2 through 17. So if I evaluate that, you'll see we have false, false, 4, false, 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 8, and etc. Here's a 12 here, here's a 14 here, a 16 here. Each one of those are the row numbers where the name Jack appears. And the second row function, in this case 4, 4, is indicating for the small function what the k number is. So in this case, I'm going to look for the fourth smallest of those five, which are 4, 8, 12, 14, and 16. I should get the number 14 from that. So when I hit evaluate, it's going to make that 4. So now I'm looking for the fourth smallest in that. I hit evaluate, and I get 14. So again, of the five different locations Jack is in that list, the fourth one is in row 14. So now I'm looking at the index function in E1 to F17, row 14, column 1. I select that, 
that's Jack. If error Jack, if not, then blank. It gives me Jack, and that's what ends up in cell H17. I'll close that. Now let's take a look at, say, the score for the third instance here. Same basic scenario. First, it's going to identify what I1, which is Jack. Next thing it's going to do after identifying all those names, it's going to see which ones of those equal Jack. So I'll hit evaluate, and again, we get a series of trues and falses. Every time Jack appears in that list, we get a true. Next, it's going to give me the row numbers from E2 to E17, which is going to be, again, 2 through 17. And then it's going to run the if formula, comparing that tr those trues and falses to the numbers 2 through 17. And there I get that same list of 4, 8, 12, 14, and 16. And then the K number for that small function is going to be 3 because I'm in the third row of that little chart there. So it's going to say, all right, give me the third smallest instance of the numbers for the small function. And in this case, since we have 4, 8, 12, I should get 12 from that. So I hit evaluate and sure enough I get 12. So now it's my index is in E1 to F17 give me row 12 column 2 and that in this case is 90 and that's what I get in cell I6 is 90. So that's how this function works. I hope it's useful to you. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.